So can we actually thinking about uh, Starfield, thinking about Elder Scrolls Six, go through the full life of a video game you've created. So what's it take to take a game from the idea to find the final product? What are the different steps along the way? Great question. Um, well, usually it starts with, I mean, honestly, lunchtime conversations with a number of us. Hey, we, we think we want to do this. This is what it's going to be like. I mean, look, with an Elder Scrolls, you know you're going to do it. It's a matter of when. You say, okay, what's the tone we're going for, right? Where is it set? So we usually start with the world. And then we are always overlapping. So while we're making one game, as we are, you know, getting in the throes of it or wrapping it, you know, eh, probably the, by the midpoint of one game, we've had enough conversations to understand what the next one's going to be. What are the big ticket, like, where's it set? What's the tone? Is there a big ticket feature or two that make it really unique? And then when we're finishing one game, we start um, prototyping. Sorry, before that, we start concepting. So we'll do concept art. And for one reason or another, I usually have the beginning of the game worked out. Like I like to think about, okay, how's the game start? What's mm -hmm. the player do first? Um, we do music early, you know, so take Elder Scrolls 6. We forgot where it's set. What's the tone? What are the big features? We discuss the beginning of the game, which we've had for a very long time. Where's it set again? Um, yep. <laughs> uh, in Tamriel. And... Uh, damn it. Well, at least we know we narrowed it down that. Yeah. That, that would be epic if it was like a portal into another dimension. Anyway. Then I like to do music. So we've already done a take on the music uh, for Elder Scrolls Six. So you can sit there with the with like the, the concept art and the music the and you music, can feel yeah. it. No, no, the music, we put in the teaser for it. This was 2018. Um, we've taken that further, obviously. And again, we're working on the world. You're then doing concepting and design for the world. And then once we, we're wrapping up one game, we can really start prototyping the new one, and you're usually building kind of your initial spaces. And so we do like to do like a first playable, a smaller section of the game that we can sort of prove out and show to people, hey, this is how it feels different. This is what it looks like. This is what's unique about it. Then we turn that into a larger chunk when more of the team comes on, when the other game is done. Um, and that's still what we call a VS, vertical slice. So you still don't have the full team on it. And it's a larger chunk of the game that you can play. And then once you feel good about that, you're going to bring on the rest of the team. And we're fortunate that the other games we've done are popular enough that we can be doing DLC and content and those kind of things while we're getting the one going. And then we're at full production where we're sort of at maximum size. We just call that production. That's like the full production period. Um, and that, depending on the game, you know, can run a year, two years, uh, maybe more. And then you kind of have a finalizing final six months to a year on a game, which is, okay, we've built everything now. Um, and usually it needs a lot of glue where we have a lot of very different elements that maybe aren't clicking together the way you want outside of the regular polish for levels and features. And we're shaving and gluing and sticking things together so that it's not the schizophrenic game experience that things flow from one into another. In terms of story, like in, on that level? It's really, no, also? usually the story, the designers have done a really good job. It's more about game features, you know, and then how they interact with the story or, hey, I went from this experience to this experience or picking flowers and alchemy feels like a different game mm -hmm. than, and then how is another character referencing that and how is that intersecting with the skill system and the interface? Like the skill system and the interface is the party host. If you think about a game, most games, particularly what, what I like to do, is that's your person who says, welcome, do this, go here, check this out. And the skill system and the way it reacts on the HUD, the interface of the game is sort of leading you to the next thing. In a, and once you get that flow down and the, the, 
the rate at which the game is giving you activities, then you're in like what we we describe as a game flow. What is and it, it's not till really that last year. Before that, the game flow was just it's not it doesn't even exist mm -hmm. in the way that you see it in the final game. And that's what we we're working on a lot that last year. So at which point is like the set of skills, the skill tree, the characteristics of the role playing aspect mm -hmm. of it? When is that set? The ideas we usually have it in the beginning, but it's just we know it won't be done until that last year. We'll have one, but we know it's going to get honed because it's not until you really see, okay, how impactful is that one? How much are you doing it? Like how much are you really? And the main combat ones, they always win. You always know the players will drift toward the combat type skills because every character needs some amount of that. But okay, well, how how important is cooking? How important is alchemy? How important is these other type of activities? And then how do you balance them where when you load up the skill menu, it isn't automatically give me plus 10 damage. Mm -hmm. How do you get the, what about the combat system? That does seem to be an important part of a lot of games. Even Start in the beginning, yeah, every time, yep. So usually when we're making that first playable, it's an area you can go through, some amount of dialogue, some amount of combat. How do you get the combat right? What What's the secret to a great combat system? Well, first on a control side, helping the player when they don't realize it. You know, there's a lot of tricks you can do with magnetism in terms of the controller and where the attacks go. So it has to feel, the minute to minute has to feel really good in your hand. So there's a lot of animation time right, and changing animation so they're impactful and they, they happen at a rate that the player feels like they're really doing it. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately, it's the illusion that the enemies are smart, but they really are there for you to kill them, <laughs> right? So they do a lot of things to just let themselves get killed. They're not as near as smart, near as smart as we can make them, because it turns out that is not fun. Right. <laughs> so there's a balance between, but there's a that is, I guess, a, a kind of AI, and it's a very intimate interaction with an AI because it's like there's a lot of stuff going on. It's not just very kind of shallow, like a dialogue or something like that. It's like there's a time critical nature of it. A lot of stuff is happening. And if ever, if anything feels off, it's, it's going to feel wrong. Yep. All the games do it. Um, you know, it's not unique to what we do in terms of how they handle combat scenarios. Um, and there's some games that just do it extremely well in terms of, um, even in multiplayer where you're playing bots and most people don't know it, mm -hmm. um, or how, a, a multiple enemy scenario is really, you, you know, they don't all shoot you. They trade off. They're going to wait. And I was like, all right, I'll just wait my turn because we don't want to overwhelm them. But he feels like you feel like you're overwhelmed when there's six enemies. But, you know, a good game will, no, they're going to, they're going to take their time. Is there a science to it? Is it, is it art? Is it like, <laughs> like how, how, yes, how did, yes. I mean, it's it's oh. it's all of that. So it's like an iterative process where you try different things. You have different yep. ideas. There's a lot of there's a lot of animation. There's a lot of timing, design. animation work, HUD work. Also, how does the reticule change? Um, what are the little sound effects? What about like the the gamify like that is fun? That again, aspect. that goes back to the winning. You know, right. so winning is fun. Yes. Death is not. Yes. Let the Wookiee win. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you have to dumb down the AI to make it fun for humans. Um, because if if you didn't, it would just be just slaughter nonstop for, for all humans. That's good to know. What about things like um, you said cooking, like crafting, making potions and poisons and uh, smithing, weapons and armor? <laughs> cooking mm -hmm. how do you get that right what's what's interesting there it's such an interesting like uh just, you know a lot of games don't have that kind of thing so what role yeah, does yeah. that play in you know uh, i think we, the we really great? cracked it uh, in a way i like with fallout 4 actually where when we're doing elder scrolls we have like the flowers and things and you have alchemy and we took this to okay if it's post-apocalyptic what if everything in the world was an 
alchemical ingredients some kind so breaking it down to their components so when you walk around a world like that again we like the simulation we like we like the forks and the spoons and the cups and all that okay how can i use those to create so i i love how it works starts working in fallout 4 where okay all these things i find there is they have some value in creating or crafting outside of a cup is worth one gold piece or one cap. 